the prayers and uh, into the sage of scripture, the summary, the worship, the choir, the announcement, everything, Lord, uh, we've been blessed and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you for those that are working behind the scene for us to see and also to hear what is being said right from this place. My prayer is our hearts will be opened as the spirit of the Lord will get into us and whisper to us so that we will hear, we will do what the Lord has for us to do in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that none of our blessings will be taken out from us. And all that you will ask us to do, Lord, in this end time, I pray, you will grant unto us the grace. And as you have said, you will pour out your spirit. Your spirit will be poured upon your people here so that we will do our part in gathering the souls into the kingdom in Jesus. You always hear us and you answer us. And you have heard and you have answered. May your name be exalted and be glorified in our midst to today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 We thank God once again. I said we're going to listen to the word of God at this time. And the topic the Lord has for us at this moment is the watchman. I just the watchman. Simple, the watchman. And if you don't know who a watchman is in our modern term or where we are, what we say is the security man, the security man. So I'm going to use the word watchman because that's what the Bible uses or the Bible says. And I just want to remind you, whenever you hear the word watchman from my mouth, I'm talking about the security man. And so you take note of that. The watchman. I want us to go to 2 Samuel chapter 18. And I'm going to read from verse number 24. 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 24. And David, and David sat, sat between the two gates. And the watchman went up to the roof over the gate unto the wall, and lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, a man running alone. And the watchman cried, and told the king, and the king said, If he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. And he came apace, and drew near, verse 26, and the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called unto the porter and said, Behold, another man running alone. And the king said, He also bringeth tidings. Me thinketh the running of the first most, foremost rather, is like the running of Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man and cometh with good tidings. Now, before we got into the passage, I just want to let you understand me right from this point so that you will get the full import of the message that I want to pass across as the Lord is speaking to us today. Now, if you are a lover of nature, and uh, I want to calm your soul. You want to calm your spirit. And you often sit by uh, probably your TV or your iPad or your computer. And you begin to watch these uh, nature. Animals crying, weeping. And uh, the, the mountains and the leaves and the trees. And uh, everything that uh, is being shown as nature on the screen. As you begin to look at that, you probably might have stumbled on this, that the vulnerables in the wild normally watches over their other counterparts, which are also vulnerables. And what I'm saying is, especially you look at the birds and also the monkeys, when they see the predator are coming, already seen and will run up to the tree 
or the bird or, or who might be already on the tree, he will see a predator like a lion, like a tiger, like a cheetah coming at the other animals. So they will sit on top of the trees and then they begin to make some kind of a weird uh, sound telling them, hey, <laughs> Mr. Lion is coming, the king of the forest is coming, you better run for your life. And the monkeys, they will run up and begin to make some kind of a weird uh, noise telling the other monkeys and the other animals that the predator, the king of the forest is coming and as such, they need to run for their lives. And uh, some of them, luckily, will run for their lives, but the unlucky one, well, will be, will be caught by the lion. Well, what I'm saying, they have done their part. If you are caught in any way, it's not their problem. I mean, it's not the problem of the monkey or the bird. The bird did its part. The monkey has done its part. It's just that somebody was slow. Somebody was careless. Somebody didn't mind about what was coming and just felt, well, I'm enjoying my life. I'm, jo I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the grass. I'm enjoying, enjoying the plants. I'm joy, enjoying my food. Let me go ahead. And before it knows, the king of the forest, either the lion or the tiger, the bear, the cheetah, they might have pounced on them and uh, tear them into pieces and uh, killed them. The same thing. The watchman, the monkey, the watchman, the bird, has to do his work or does. After all, nobody has hired him, but for love, for the other animals will cry out and make the noise so that the alarm will get there and those who knows what's going on will run away. Do you know the same way God has made us watchmen? Watchmen. You heard from the reading of Ezekiel, son of man, I have made you a watchman. The Lord has made you a child of God, a watchman, has made me a Christian, a watchman, and my job, my business is to watch over the souls of the people, the people in the church, the people in your house, the people on the street, the people in the school system, wherever we see people, God has made you and I, as Christians, as children of God, watch men to watch over their souls so that their souls will not be destroyed. In short, the Lord has made you, has made me watchman over the whole world. And that's why the crusade that we are doing in Enugu, don't say it's, it's, it's the people of Enugu, don't say it's the people of Nigeria, don't say it's deeper life in Lagos, don't just say it's deeper life in Enugu or in Nigeria. That is not what attitude we ought to display. Every one of us, in fact, our pastor specifically made it clear that even the messages between now and then has to have something to do with this crusade. And that's why we're coming out with a message like this so that he watchman for the world, but you also, I also will be the watchman over the world. This morning I have three uh, short subtopics that I want to discuss with you. Number one, the place and position of a watchman. The place and position of a watchman. Number two, the perception of a watchman. And number three, the purpose of a watchman. Let's look at the first one, the place and position of a watchman or the security man. It's very important that the security man will will position himself, will position herself at a specific place where he can see what is going on. Let's read again from 2 Samuel chapter 18, and I am reading from verse number 24. 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse number 24. And David sat between the two gates. Take note of that, two gates. And then the watchman went up to the roof. Take note of that to rob top of the roof, 
over the gate unto the wall. That's another thing that you need to take note of. A wall. And lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man running alone. Position and place. So in this verse that I have read to you, the watchman, the security man, has to be in a certain place in order to see what was coming to the place. So the place is the gates and the wall. He sits at the gate that is close to the wall. And then the position, he positions himself on top of the roof. We as watchmen need to position and place ourselves to see what is coming to the people, what is coming unto the world. We must come out and go out. I repeat that again. We must come out and go out so we can see going on and what is going to be the punishment of what's going on. What's going on and what's going on will act to bring the judgment upon it. What's going on? In fact, if we are not or can't leave the luxury, the comfort of our homes and the luxury bed, if we can't leave it, we cannot go out to see. And we can, if we cannot come out of our convenient living rooms, then we cannot go out to see. And if we cannot get out of our rocking chair and get out, then we cannot go out to see. But we have to see so that we will be able to tell them what is ahead. The warning that we should give to them for them to take very precaution of their life. That is, they will take precaution of their lives and that they will not be destroyed. There is nothing wrong for you, my sister. There is nothing wrong for you, my brother, to drive by your neighborhood so you can just see the children that are walking on the street aimlessly and doing nothing aimlessly so that you will be able to know what alarm that you can give to when I was driving and I just uh, I was driving and somebody was, was was walking towards me and I was driving and all of a sudden this lady just lifted up her dress up like this and I'm telling you she had nothing on not even a hand everything was just clear and she she just opened. Now, if you, if you see all this, it tells you there has to be an alarm. You have to sound an alarm onto the people so that what's coming, there's nothing wrong going to the park that is closer to your neighborhood and look at what's going on so that you will, you will know the kind of alarm you will sound to the people because you are a watchman. You man, there's nothing wrong at times going to these funerals so you will see what's going on. Going to these parties, your aim is not just going to eat and drink and eat and drink and chat and make friends. That is not your aim. Spy out to make sure you know what's going on so you will be able to sound the alarm that is needed to be sounded for them to hear. In fact, there are malls all over around us. You can watch it. Just as uh, very soon uh, grandpas in and grandmas in our midst will be watching. We already have some of them, right? Grandpas, are you here? Ah, thank God for grandpas and grandmas. <laughs> Mama, yeah. Mama understand what I'm talking what I'm talking about. So grandpa sits at a particular place where he will see us coming in. And if you come home late, then you are in trouble. See, grandpa was old. He had lived his life. He will soon die. Why wouldn't he go and sleep and out himself? No. Grandpa, grandma will not do that. You might think that is none of your business, grandpa. None of your business, grandma. Grandma, grandpa doesn't think that way. Grandma has a name on you. Grandpa has a name on you. 
And he wants that name to continue to labor. He wants that name to continue to exist. Not exist in the mud where people are going to trample over it. That name upon you, he has his eye on it. And he has to make sure that even if he dies, that name will continue to exist. So grandpa will make sure that he will do his responsibility towards you in making sure you are safe, in making sure you are protected, in making sure you are directed, in making sure you do not fall into any trap that will destroy your life. That is the responsibility of a grandpa. And that was the responsibility of my own he positioned himself. He sat at a certain place where he will see us coming back home. Grandpa here, maybe you will take note of this and make sure you streamline. Or you are a father here, a mother here, you will take note of that. So you streamline the life of the children. You become a watchman. You become a security man. Let's read from 2 Kings chapter 9 verse 17. 2 Kings chapter 9 verse number 17. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel. And he spied the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. And Joram said, take an horseman and send to meet them and let him say, is it peace? And now go back again. This, I'm reading these passages together because they give us the same thing. Second Samuel chapter 18. Now look at verse 24. And David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof. Take note of that. The watchman went up to the roof over the gate and onto the wall and lifted up his eyes and looked and behold a man running alone. You see, all this while, the man has been running towards the city. The man has been coming towards the city, but nobody had seen him coming. Nobody saw him coming until the watchman went to the right position. Look at, the, look at verse 24 again. And the watchman, I'm reading the second part, and the watchman went up to the roof. It was when he went up to the roof and then lifted up his eyes and then behold, that was the time he saw somebody running towards the city. Although the man has been running, but because the people weren't in their right position, they didn't see him. It was only when the watchman, the security man, went to the right position that he saw this watch, uh, the, the man running. See, at times, you have to move out of the home before you can see. At times, you have to travel before you can see. At times, you have to go to places before you can if you sit at the same place, you don't see so many things. You don't say that, well, uh, uh, this world is this or that, and if, if you get out there, you may uh, kind of get some things into your life and you may compromise and all that. But also think about it this way, that we are watchmen over the people. How do we warn the people? How do we tell the people of the impending doom and danger? We have to go out there and see them and, and, and have something to do with them before we will be able to tell them anything. And this morning, I have come to tell you, if you have forgotten, that you are a watchman. You are a security man. If you do not want able to, be, to befall your family, you, want, you, you do not want evil to befall your friends. You do not want evil to befall your neighbors, the staff that you work at the place work, Then you must position yourself to be a good watchman, a security man, so you can see and warn them. In Exodus chapter 32, verse 25. Exodus chapter 32. I'm reading from verse number 25. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, verse 26, then Moses stood in the gate. Moses stood at the right place, 
place of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? That was the alarm. Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Here was Moses. The Lord had called him up to the mountain. And he was before the Lord up there on the mountain. But God, who sees beyond what is right here, saw the people at the camp, that they were misbehaving themselves. And at that point, you know, Moses did not see it because Moses wasn't at the, even though he was the watchman, he wasn't at the right place. He wasn't at the right position. That Therefore, he couldn't see what was going on in the camp. But the man, God, who had the right perception, who can see beyond, saw it and told Moses, Moses, you better get down there because the people you brought, the people you are leading, this and this and this is what they are doing. In fact, Aaron has made them look naked already before me and I'm going to consume them if you don't do anything about that. And so Moses ran down. That was when he came to the place and then he positioned himself in a place where he can warn the people. And look at that. It says in verse 26, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side? If he had said who is on the Lord's side on the mountaintop, nobody could Actually, nobody will hear him. In fact, how could he even say that when he had, he had not seen anything? It was until he saw by positioning himself in the right place that he was able to warn who is on the Lord's side. Who is on the Lord's side? Moses was having a nice time when this thing happened. He was beholding the glory of God, the presence of the Lord when this happened. Do you know the same thing at times happened to us? We may come to church and we enjoy ourselves and do everything, yet the people... Our families are, are having things, to, doing things that are, are abominable unto the Lord. As parents, we become so accustomed to the work of the Lord and the duties of the Lord and the assignments of the Lord in God's house to the extent we forget our homes and we don't remember our homes. Yet, God is seeing and looking that probably the children are not doing the right thing, are not living well, and therefore we have to go back and look at times when we get ourselves busy praying, busy reading the Bible, busy studying, busy worshiping, busy singing, and then our family members are doing something that are not right in the presence of the Lord. We get ourselves out and we go for retreats, we go for camps, we go for conferences, we go for conventions, and then we look back, I mean God looks back and he sees our homes and everything is not right. May the Lord help us to make sure that everything is right in our homes in Jesus' name. And may the Lord help us to help our family to be in tune with God, with Christ, with the Holy Spirit, whether we are there or not in Jesus' name. See, when, when God sees peeps, when we are not there, and he sees that the home is evil, and there is sin, and there is compromise, and there is distrust, and there is disbelief of God. And the children are not doing the right thing, and the family members are not doing the right thing. God shakes his head, just like he did when he was with Moses. He shakes, he shakes his head, and he said, I wish I could tell the man to stop whatever he is doing. Maybe the man will be praying, the woman will be praying. God said, I wish I could stop that man to stop praying and go back to see to it that everything in the family is right. Maybe you may be uh, teaching, just I am preaching here. God will look back, and the, my, my, if my family is at home, will look back and everything is not right. He could say, I 
wish, I wish I could tell the man preaching that he will go back and make sure everything is right with the family before he comes and offer the word of God. Playing instrument, singing in the choir, or singing worship, God will peep and will look into your home and will see what's going on and will say, I wish I could tell those singers, I wish I could tell those instrumentalists that they must go back home and make sure that everything is right with their homes before they would come and do whatever service they are doing unto me. God said, Moses, go down. I know you are enjoying my presence, but go down. I know you have come to receive from me, but go down. I know you will be a, a, a benefit if I should give you everything for the people of God, but now go down. Because the people you are bringing in have gone astray and they are doing the wrong thing. Now, why am I making all this noise? All I am saying here is, don't go to rest if any of your family member is not saved. And as a minister, I'm telling myself, I don't have to go and rest if any of the members in the church is not saved. We have to gather ourselves and gather our children together, make sure every one of us on that day will be raptured and uh, we will be rapturable in Jesus' name. Else, why are we going out to preach? We have said every last Saturday of the month, we are going to go out to preach. What benefit are we going to receive if our own home is not saved? If our own children are not saved? I'm not saying stop what you are doing. Continue doing it, but make sure you are serious about the salvation of that child. You are serious about the salvation of that son, of that uh, girl, so that all of us together, we will be able to make it in Jesus' name. And we will make it in Jesus' name. Let's look at point number two. So this point one, what we are saying is make sure you will put yourself, you place yourself in a place, in a position where you will see the activities of, of human lives, of human beings, and you will be able to sound the alarm onto them. Point number two, the perception of a watchman, the perception of a security man. Second Kings chapter 18 verse 27. 2 Kings chapter 18, verse number 27. And the watchman said, Me thinketh, the running of the foremost is like the running of Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man and cometh with good tidings. And the king said, He is a good man. The man said, that is the watchman said, me think it, me think it, me think it. You see, the watchman shouldn't only see. He must also think about what he is seeing or what he is looking at. See, an ordinary person may see and will not do anything. An ordinary person in the city may climb the tower and look at the man running and take for granted, well, somebody is running. He will not take any action. He will not do anything to it. To him, it's not for somebody to run. But that is different from when a watchman, when a security man at that time sees somebody running. To him, it's not normal. Just take the, the case I read from Exodus as an example. Aaron was a leader there. The leaders, the tribal leaders were all there. They did not see anything wrong of the people worshiping idol. To them, after all, that's what they've been doing in Egypt. So what's wrong if they do it there? And Aaron also, who was supposed to know better, couldn't see anything wrong. In fact, he, he was less a security man. But when the security man, Moses, when the watchman, Moses, when he came, he was very angry and he said, who is 
on the Lord's side. That is the picture I'm trying to let you understand. So there is the, 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 the ordinary man sees the evil, the ordinary man sees the danger and don't do anything. But the watchman who perceives, because he doesn't just see something, he sees beyond what is being seen physically. He thinks about it. That's why the man said, me think it, me think it, that this running is like this man. When the man of perception sees something, it's different from the ordinary man. When a fornicator sees a thief, that is normal. And when a thief sees a robber, to him it's normal for everybody to be a thief. And when a drunkard sees people that are naked on the street, to him it's normal for people to be what? To be naked on the street. But to you, a Christian, who is the watchman, it shouldn't be normal. It should not be normal because you know the dangers that are going to come after that. Read 2 Kings again, chapter 9, verse 17. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel, and he spied the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. I see a company. You see, this is another perception. Well, any other person could have seen the company, but would not be disturbed, would not have any concern, wouldn't have to bother himself or herself to go and tell the king. But this man, because he was a, he was a watchman, when he saw it, he knew something dangerous was coming, something that is going to jeopardize the nation, the king, the city was coming. And therefore, he took action by going to tell the king. That is exactly what we are looking at here. You as a watchman, Christian, you as a watchman, child of God, you as a watchman, son of God, you have to have perception. When you see the people living contrary to the word of God, you are not going to act like the ordinary man, like the street man, like the street girl, street boy, and say, well, after all, that is how everybody lives. That is how the world is, and that is how our world that is not how you are going to think. You have a perception because you are the watchman. You are the watchman and therefore you have perception. Just as when we go to some places and then uh, we, we are being when we are being and uh, my brother has a gun in his hand and that because, uh, well, <laughs> If he has a gun, is uh, harassing him? Why do you have this gun? I don't have any problem with that. But the security man will have a con. Why are you entering here with a gun? He will be asked for that because uh, he has insight. He has perception. He has something with this that you don't see, and that is the. We are painting out here that as a child of God, when you see the sinner, don't see him as all the other people are seeing, but see him as somebody who has the wrath of God upon his life, upon her life, and if he or she does not repent, danger is ahead of him. We will do our part in Jesus' name. Second Samuel chapter 18 verse 25. Second Samuel chapter 18. Verse 25, it says, And the watchman cried and told the king, and the king said, If he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. Now, just stop there. Look at the watchman. What did he do? He cried. Why did he cry? He cried because he had a perception. He had insight into what was coming. If you read from verse 24, which we have already read, the, watch, uh, the, the gate man saw, lifted up his, uh, his eye, 
eyes and looked and behold, somebody was running. And he saw, he knew that danger was coming. And in verse 25, the word, that same watchman cried, cried, cried. That is exactly what we need to do. We see these lives that are in danger, we cry. We cry to them. Just as I told you earlier about the bread and the monkey making that kind of a weird noise, you cry so that people will run to safety. But why did the watchman cry? The watchman saw danger. So must the Christian watchman see hellfire and be able to describe the tribulation and be able to come out to let the people know about the trumpets that are going to be sounded in judgment and the coming plagues that are going to come upon the world and the pouring of the veils, which, uh, which is the wrath of God that's going to be poured upon the earth. In fact, in Mark chapter 9, verse 44, the Bible tells us, and the fire is not quenched where they are warm, diet not. The worm dieth not, and the fire does not quench. We must be able to let them understand all this. I read from Acts chapter 17, verse number 22. Acts 17, verse 22. Acts 17, verse 22. Then Paul stood in the, mar in the midst of Mars hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive, see that, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Many people have passed through this city before. Remember the perception of the watchman. Many people have passed through this city before. Many people living in this city, but none of them have made or made this pronouncement. But the man of perception, in this case, Paul, saw what the people were doing. They had given themselves unto idolatry. For the people who been in that place and for the people who pass, it's normal to them. Well, we have been seeing this all the time. Every time we pass by, we see all these images, we see all these idols, we see all these people bowing to them, we see all these people going to them and ask for, for counsel and ask for their future and reading their palm. We see it every day. For those people, it was normal. But to the man of perception, he doesn't see it as normal because he knew if we have to worship at all, it has to be the God of heaven. It has to be the God of Abraham. It has to be the God who sent his only begotten son to come on earth to die for human. No image has died for anyone. No idol has died for anyone. Other human being has died for anyone, so it's only the Son of God that if we have any worship, we must give to. But these people were given to worshiping idols, and the man of perception got there, and he saw it right. What these people are doing is not right, and therefore he proclaimed to them, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Brothers and sisters, when we enter a place, when we enter a city, when we enter a house, when we enter a an office, we must perceive the evil that's going there, the sin that is going there, so we can tell the people that they must come out. Are they drunkards? We have to perceive. Are they fornicators? We have to perceive. Are they people taking bribe? We have to perceive. Are they people living in a life that is contrary to the word of God? We must perceive. And when we perceive, we cry. Look at Isaiah chapter 21 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 21 verse number 6. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go, set a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. Set a watchman. Let him declare what he seeth. And this afternoon I come before you who among us is going to be a watchman. A watchman over, the, over your house. In your own home. Let me start there. In your own home. In your own house.
Because who among you in that family is going to set up himself as a watchman, watching over the souls of all the, of the individual members in that home? And as a house fellowship, let me declare it to you, who among you in that house fellowship is going to set up himself as a watchman and be watching security man and making sure every life in that house fellowship is secure. And in this church, who among us is going to set up himself as the security man, as a watchman, and make sure that our lives are secured and our lives are being watched so that the evil day will not come pounce on us and destroy us. I pray we will have such men among us and you will have such um, in your house so that uh, we will not be destroyed in G. Number three, the purpose of a watchman. The purpose of a watchman. So we have looked at the place and the position of a watchman and then we have also looked at the perception of a watchman. We are now looking at the purpose of a watchman or the security man. Second Kings chapter 18 verse 20 Second Kings chapter 18 verse number 23. And the watchman cried and told the king, and the king said, If he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. And he came apace and drew near. The purpose of the watchman is to cry. And when he has to cry, he has seen danger. He is not going to uh, say that, hey, danger is coming. You, you, you saw how pastor did it the other time. And this, and will you not wake up? Let me ask you, if your house is really in fire, and your child, child can walk, can talk, but is fast asleep, and you get into this house, that fire is raising down. Will you just be uh, John, you sleep too much. Uh, John, why don't you see fire? Gone with the fire. Because you are not serious. But the watchman, God said, uh, let the watchman cry. In Isaiah 58 verse 1, where I, 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 I'm reading Isaiah 50, 58 verse number 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Look at that. Isaiah 58 verse 1, God is speaking here. He says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. And your own house, the sin that is going on, the evil that is going on, cry aloud. And children is crying aloud, don't be angry with because mommy and daddy are doing what God wants them to do. Mommy and daddy are taking the responsibility of crying aloud as God has given them that duty to do towards you. And therefore, there is no need to be angry at mommy and to be mad at daddy. Listen to what mommy is saying. And as you do that, God's blessing will come down upon your life in Jesus' name. And so the watchman, the purpose is to cry. And in fact, he has to cry until the people get ready. Look at 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 21. 2 Kings chapter 9, verse number 21. He cries until the people make ready. And Joram said, make ready. And his chariots were made ready. You cry. You always make sure you tell the people they are evil, they are sin. You tell it until they make ready and say, hands up for Christ. And say, I surrender for Christ. And say, I bow for Christ. And say, I give for Christ. That is when you know the people are ready. So you cry but how do you cry? You cry until you see the people are ready and to accept Christ and to be led and, and uh, live in Christ. And uh, number two thing here also is you cry until they take action. Look at 2 Kings chapter 9 verse 17. 2 Kings chapter 9 verse 17. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel, and he spied the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. And Joram said, take 
an horseman and sent to meet them and let him say, is it peace? So here also we see when the watchman cried, he cried until Joram took action by telling the people, take a horseman and send to meet them. So how do you cry? You cry until the people get ready. And not only that, take action. Some people may get ready. Yes, I'm ready for Christ. But do they really take action by confessing their sins and forsaking their sins and coming to live and walk in Christ? They don't do that. But it's your responsibility. It's my responsibility that as we cry, as we cry, we also make sure we cry, they, they make ready, they get themselves ready, and take action. They take action. Brethren, it's our responsibility. I may cry differently. You may cry with your hands. I may cry with my pen. I may cry with my computer. I may cry with my phone. You may cry, you can cry with anything at all at your disposal. All you have to do is you are crying for the people to hear so they will get ready and then they will take action over their own life. You, can, you may say, I don't know how to cry with my mouth. How about your phone? Why did you pray for us in this world? But at times God permits some things. It's not that he did it, but he permits it. Now this gospel is really of the time when I believe. Ah. Signs and wonders. I think it was only two promotions. And we did one here. We did one. And the other one was, I think, uh, uh, maybe headquarters did it. Because that's the only promotion size. Responsibility. You need to place yourself and position yourself in the place where you will see the activities of the people and what's and you have to have perception you have to have perception you have to have perception because you are not going to see like any other man seeing any other woman seeing if you see as every other person singing you cannot sound the alarm because you will be an ordinary person but remember you are not an ordinary the world you place yourself on top of the roof so that every activity that is going on among your family members you will see in the church you will see and at the at the neighborhood you will see and in the city you will see at the place of work you will see and where you are schooling you will see you position yourself you place yourself and then you move ahead, not just seeing, but also perceiving. You will see more than the ordinary person will see. What others will see and will say, oh, this is normal. You will say, this is not normal. What normal? That is the watchman. That is the security man. And you will do your part. You will do your part. I will do my part. And remember the Enugu Crusader, do your part, make sure that people are tuning in and going to the, to the uh, 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 social media platforms, let them go there and DLBC TV or Deeper Life Bible Church, let them put it there and they are going to be there and God is going to touch their lives. Remember that lady's testimony from California. He, he didn't know Deepa Lai, but I believe somebody might have introduced their uh, signs and wonders to her. And uh, she logged in uh, and uh, she was on the platform and God touched her. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? That is why you need to do your part. It takes a man of perception. It takes a man of perception. And remember, there is that responsibility on your head. Responsibility on your Responsibility on your responsibility on your head. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you and bless you. We worship you. We exalt you this afternoon. We give you all the glory, dear Lord, for speaking to us this afternoon concerning ourselves being watchmen and security men. Watchmen over our families, 
over our own lives, over the lives of the people we meet, over the lives of the people in the church. Lord, I'm asking whatever we have to do on our part to sound the alarm so... Help us with it in Jesus. Spirit that on, I am asking your people will benefit from everything that you have for us through this crusade in Jesus' name. Father, touch multitudes around the world. 